Hey, welcome everyone to this uh, April leaves. <laughs> I can't read today. We welcome everyone to this April 17th meeting of the Corsican ISD Board of Trustees. This is a regular meeting and all items that will be discussed have been newly posted. Well, this is a meeting in public. It is not a meeting of the public. If you wish to speak, please register in the lobby on the audience for guest form and follow the information on the speaker form. The board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budgets, make policy and provide oversight. We are not here to manage or solve individual problems. Management is a responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe that we must educate every child, provide every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and maintain a safe and secure environment, mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. And these are our four values. And we appreciate your interest in the students of CISD. We do have an audience for guests, so I would like to bring up Dr. Daniel Maloney. And before you go, I, I need to, I, I have to read this. You fit, fit the case. Um, I have to read this, okay? The CISD Board of Trustees encourages comments about the district from citizens of the district, from district employees, or from other members of the public. Anyone wishing to speak may do so at this time. The board asks that each participant's comments pertain to public education and be no longer than three minutes per person. The board also respectfully requests that the speaker refrain from mentioning other students or parent and staff member names when addressing their concerns. Under the Texas Open Meetings Act, the board is not permitted to discuss or act upon any issue that are, that are not posted on the agenda for tonight's meeting. This means that the board members are unable to deliberate, ask questions, provide you with any response, or take any action relating to your comments. If an issue mentioned is listed on tonight's agenda, the board's deliberation of the issue will be deferred until the appropriate time during the meeting. In addition, the board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. Complaints brought by employees, students, or parents may be brought in accordance with their local school board policy. Each of these processes provides that if a resolution cannot be achieved administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of our district policy on public participation in meetings and filing complaints can be found on our website. If you need assistance with the policies or processes, please call Merrill Harrison in the superintendent's office. Mr. Branch, would you? I will. You have 30 minutes, and I'll let you know when you have one minute. Thank you. Uh, is this work? Thank you, Dr. Brown, members of the school board, citizens of Corsicana. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Uh, I'm a pediatrician. I've been here for uh, 10 years. Our daughter's a 2021 graduate of Corsicana High School. Recently, in my office, I saw a fourth grader at one of the um, local elementary schools who vomits all day while he's in school. Uh, this started uh, the day after the school shootings in Nashville. Um, he admitted to his mom that he's terrified to be in school. Uh, his mother said that he tries to, she tries to shield him from the news, but kids at school talk. He sees the metal detectors. He does the active shooter drills. He has crippling anxiety, terror, really which causes him to vomit when he's in any school building. I, I just have to say, uh, my heart broke when I heard this child's story. I've never in my um, many years of being a pediatrician felt so powerless to help a, a child to alleviate pain and alleviate suffering. And I just thought this child's fear is absolutely rational. Uh, simply put, we as a society, as a state, as a nation, are failing this child and all of our children by failing to provide for the, their most basic needs, the need for safety. Uh, gun violence is now the number one killer of young people in America, having overtaken, act, having overtaken motor vehicle accidents a few years ago. 
children realize that they are not safe anywhere, at school, at the movies, at parties, even at home. Um, and this entirely rational fear is crippling them. Uh, after the school shooting in Nashville, a Tennessee representative uh, compared schools to war zones, admitted that Congress could do nothing to solve the problem, and when asked what he did to protect his own daughter, he said that he homeschooled her. Uh, Dr. Brown, I think this is an unacceptable response. Um, I realize that you and the school administrators are doing everything you can to keep our schools safe, but I think more armed guards, more school safety officers is simply not enough. Our children are terrified with good reason. Uh, I would ask simply that the school board consider a resolution asking Governor Abbott and asking the Texas legislature to do something to reverse this trend of making assault rifles, high capacity magazines, and other firearms increasingly easier to obtain and care and carry. Literally, our lives and the lives of our children depend on it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Maloney. We appreciate that. And we now go to the superintendent's report. On March 31st, our Corsicana Education Foundation Grant Patrol went on to campuses. They awarded 19 grants to 18 teachers and professionals on campuses. The grants range from $250 to $5,000. They fund many types of special projects from reading to PE to welding. We just want to express our sincere appreciation to our Education Foundation um, for, their, for their leadership, for their allowing classrooms to do with things and our teachers to do things they couldn't ordinarily accomplish. Our Calicos competed at nationals earlier this month. They received three national championships and a grand champion nod for the, which was called the Giving Back Award. It was a recognition based on events in which the Calicos donate their time and give back to their school district and community. The award came with $1,000, which they are allowed to donate to a charity of their choice. So congratulations to our Calicos. At the high school, the scholarship song, which is Money, 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 um, has been popular this spring with almost $300,000 awarded to our graduating seniors in scholarships. So we're very proud of them. In tennis, our ninth grader, Kay Higgs, is going to be an alternate at State next week after finishing third in the Region 2 5A tennis tournament in Melissa last week. She upset the number one seed in straight sets to open the tournament. Regional quarter finalists include Emma Carpenter, Avery Williams in girl and Avery Williams in girls doubles, and Isaac Higgs and Hillary Zhang in mixed doubles. Star testing begins this week at our secondary campuses and will begin next week at our and will be held next week at our elementary campuses. The first of two kindergarten registration events is scheduled for 5:30 on Thursday at all five elementary campuses, and the same event will be held next Thursday, April 27th at 5.30 at the elementary campuses. Students have to be five years old as of September 1st to be registered. And you can get more information at CISD.org. The district host is hosting a job fair on May 8th. The event is scheduled for 5.15 at Corsicana Middle School. We're hiring for almost all positions throughout the district and we encourage anyone who is interested to come to the job fair on May 8th at the middle school. On May 10th, the first ever Corsicana Day of Champions will be held at Community National Bank and Trust Tiger Stadium. This day of celebration for our special needs students in middle school and high school includes fun competitions like softball throws, walks, both assisted in wheelchair, sprints, and track races. So we are very excited about our first ever Corsicana Day of Champions. Thank you very much. Now we're moving to our action items. The first item on the agenda is the announcement of the board training credit. All right, so I have to read this in entirety. The United States Board of Education will completely require continuing education each year of service as a basic obligation and expectation of any sitting board member. As board president, I am required to announce the name of each member who, as of that member's anniversary of election or appointment to the board has completed the required continuing education. 
has exceeded the requiring continuing education and is deficient in meeting the required continuing education. The requirements for training are measured as of the first anniversary of the date of the trustee's election or appointment or two-year anniversary of his or her previous training as applicable. There are seven training areas for board members continuing education. Number one, the local district orientation. Two, orientation to the Texas Education Code. Three, team building. Four, additional continuing education. Five, evaluating student academic performance and setting goals. And number six, identifying and reporting abuse, trafficking, and other maltreatment of children. To the extent applicable to each board member, I will announce the completion or deficiency as to required training. For members who still have time remaining to complete required training, I will announce those board members who have scheduled timely training and those who have not yet scheduled the training. At the conclusion of this announcement, I will announce any board members training in excess of the continuing education requirements. Local district orient orientation, Brad Farmer has completed the, the required local district orientation. Orientation to the Texas Education Code, Brad Farmer has completed the orientation to the Texas Education Code training. Post legislative updates not applicable. Team building, the following board members have completed the annual team building training. Jamie Roman, Kathy Branch, Lamar Chambers, Leah Blacker, Barbara Kelly, Seth Brown, and Brad Farmer. Additional continuing education. The following board members have completed additional continuing education. Jamie Roman, Kathy Branch, Jamar Chambers, Leah Blacker, Barbara Kelly, Seth Brown, and Brad Farmer. Evaluating student academic performance and setting goals. This training must be completed every two years, formally uh, Senate Bill 1566 training. The following board members have completed the biannual training. Jamie Roman, Kathy Branch, Mark Chambers, Leah Blackard, Barbara Kelly, Seth Brown, and Brad Farmer. Identifying and reporting abuse, trafficking, and other maltreatment of children. The training must be completed every two years. The following board members have completed the biannual training on identifying and reporting abuse and trafficking and other maltreatment of children. Seth Brown, Kathy Branch, Mark Chambers, Barbara Kelly, Leah Blackard, Jamie Roman, and Brad Farmer. Exceeding required continuing education. Board member Seth Brown exceeded the required amount of continuing education training by eight additional hours. Board member Jamie Roman exceeded the requirement required amount of continuing education by one additional hour. Board member Kathy Branch exceeded the required amount of continuing education training by one additional hour. Board member Leah Blackard exceeded the required amount of continuing education training by seven additional hours. Board member Barbara Kelly exceeded the required amount of continuing education by 12 additional hours. Board member Kamar Chambers exceeded the required amount of continuing education by four additional hours. And board member Brad Farmer exceeded the required amount of continuing education training by 10 additional hours. Okay. Now we're going to move into the health curriculum review and the group. Thank you, Dr. Frost, Dr. Brown, members of the board. Uh, we're here for round two of our health curriculum review uh, that's mandated by the state and requires local approval. Uh, we're requesting that you uh, view both of the fourth grade videos that our leading lady, Carla Witt, has put together for us again uh, and approve both of those. Hi, my name is Carla Witt and I'm a registered nurse. I'm also a mom of two boys. Today, we're gonna have a conversation between you, a fourth grade boy, and myself. We will be talking about how your body will be changing and how these changes are a normal part of growing up. You will learn more information as you get older, but for today, we're going to keep the answers very simple, just for you, a fourth grade boy. As I've been working on campuses and visiting with fourth grade boys, and even experience with my own boys, these are some questions I have heard you ask. Sometimes after recess or playing outside, I sweat and my body smells bad. Why? Well, as you get older, your sweat glands called African glands start producing a stinky sweat. When the sweat mixes with the bacteria on your skin, it causes the odor. It's called body odor or BO. 
you will notice the odor, especially under your arms and maybe even on your feet. This is why the reason you shower and wear deodorant is so important. Just for a fun fact, the body spray that you think gets rid of the odor, it only hides the odor for a little bit. Then the body odor will come back. It is still there and you still smell bad. Showering, wearing deodorant, clean clothes, and clean socks will help get rid of the body odor. Sometimes my leg hurts. Ow. Why? Well, your muscles and your legs are growing. It's called growing pains. Sometimes you may grow as many as four inches in a year. If your legs hurt a lot, talk to a parent or a guardian about getting some medicine to help you with the discomfort. Sometimes I get bumps on my face. What causes that? Well, as you get older, your body starts to produce an oil called sebum, and it's on your skin. Remember, this is normal, and it could cause you to have bumps. The bumps are called pimples or acne. One way to help get rid of the bumps on your face is by washing with warm water and soap two times a day. By washing your face, you are removing the oil. You may also notice your hair is more oily. Washing your hair with shampoo will remove the oil. Sometimes my voice is different or cracks or sounds weird. Why is that? As part of growing up, your voice box or the medical term is called larynx and your vocal cords are changing. Think of it as a rubber band. In fourth grade, your vocal cords sound like this. And as you get older, the vocal cords become thicker and longer and sound like this. What if I want more information or have more questions? Who can I talk to? You can definitely talk to an adult you trust or even your school nurse. She can help you. As we end our time together, remember all boys go through these changes, but they all go through them at different ages and different grades. These changes are a normal part of growing up. Keep growing and keep getting stronger. Hi, my name is Carla Witt. I'm a registered nurse. Today, we're going to have a conversation between you, a fourth grade girl, and myself. We will be talking about how your body will be changing and how these changes are a normal part of growing up. You will learn more about information as you get older. But for today, we're going to keep the answers very simple, just for you. As I have been working on campuses and visiting with fourth grade girls and even experienced these things myself as a lady, these are some questions that I have heard. Sometimes after recess or playing outside, I sweat and my body smells really bad. Why? As you get older, your sweat glands called apocrine glands start producing a stinky sweat. When the sweat mixes with bacteria on your skin, it causes odor. We call it body odor or BO. You will notice the body odor, especially under your arms and on your feet. This is the reason why showering and wearing deodorant is so important. Just a fun fact, the perfume that you may spray does not get rid of the odor. It may hide it for a little bit, but the body odor is still there and it will still smell bad. Showering, deodorant, wearing clean clothes and clean socks will help get rid of the body odor. Sometimes I get bumps on my face. Why? Well, as you get older, your body starts to produce sebum, an oil on your skin, and it could cause you to have the bumps. The bumps are called pimples or acne. One way to get rid of the bumps on your face is by washing your face with warm water and soap twice a day. By washing your face, you are removing the oil. You may also notice that your hair is more oily. Washing your hair with shampoo will remove the oil. One time I was at school and I noticed blood on my underwear. I was so scared. What happened? I know that was very scary. As your body changes from a girl to a young lady, you may notice a small amount of blood on your underwear. This is called you having a period or the big medical word is called menstruation. This is normal. How often will I have my period? Typically about every month. 
but at the beginning it may not come every month. Your period may last for about five days and you only lose several tablespoons of blood. But if you get scared, you talk to an adult, they can help you. Sometimes my stomach cramps during my period. What should I do? Sometimes your stomach may cramp or your back may hurt or you just don't feel like yourself or you may get really hungry or you may cry easy when you have your period. <laughs> These feelings are normal. Some things you can do to help yourself is to take a hot bath. Put a heating pad on your back or your stomach, drink water, eat healthy, and even, yes, exercise. All of these things will help you. I am afraid that I may start my period at school. What do I do? Some things you can do to be prepared is to keep a pad and an extra pair of underwear in a bag in your backpack. But if you are not prepared, it's okay. You go see the school nurse. She is there to help you. If I have more questions or want more information, who do I talk to? I would talk to an adult that you trust, a parent, a guardian, or even your school nurse. As we end our time together, remember, all girls go through these changes, but we all go through them at different ages and different grades. These changes are normal part of growing up. Keep growing and keep getting stronger. We have to thank you very, very much. This is good. This is a very good, very good video. Um, we need to have a motion to approve these. Do I have to hear a motion? I move to approve the girls and boys fourth grade health curriculum video. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the boys, the girls and boys fourth grade health curriculum videos. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. Eyes have it, and we've approved the girls and boys fourth grade health curriculum videos. All right, now we're moving into our consent agenda. Uh, we've had a chance to read this. Does anyone have any questions? If so, I'll entertain a motion to approve. I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor, say aye. All opposed say no. Ayes have it, and we will adjourn into closed session uh, permitted by Texas Governor Government Code Section 551.01.